it's going to be at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. this Saturday here. And if you got any questions at all, see Sister Tracy about that. And that's with the Girls Go uh, Ministry. And then the 28th at 2 p.m. is what? Amanda's baby shower. So you women show up for that, and uh, that's just it's an amazing thing. And then uh, Sister Kimberly is doing good. Tracy talked to her today, and so uh, she's doing well, and hopefully she'll be back soon. Uh, August 29th, we're going to have uh, Missionary Matt McCumber here on the PM service, and he's somebody that I met at my credential and service, and he he is a mini, uh, missionary to Israel and Palestine, so uh, he's really he's really awesome, him and his family. So please come to the PM service on the 29th uh, to support that, please. And then uh, September 5th is Mission Sunday, and also we've got women's conference coming on, and we also have men's conference coming in September. The end of September, the women's conference is the 10th and 11th. Cheryl, you got everything you needed on that, or you want to say anything about it? said that they're registered, but if you want to go and haven't registered yet, get with her and they can get you registered. Men, uh, again, check on that. If you can't make it, the, it's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You know, if you can just make it to the services, that's that's good too, but uh, I think it's going to be an amazing thing. I actually got a packet that Cliff must have left it, but I left it in my office at home, so I'll bring that Sunday morning talk more about it, but going to be interesting so guys be be in prayer for that please uh any other announcements pathfinder's going good when is that uh, when is it Thir oh you moved it yes. all right thursday at seven o'clock pathfinders in uh keth's class over here so they moved from God's garage into Kess class. So if you guys, are you still taking people, Mary? Hey, listen up. <laughs> are you still accepting people or are you turning people away? Okay. All right. So you guys are interested in that. <laughs> let, a, uh, let Sister Mary know. Or if you got somebody that may not even go to church here and you think they need to, you know, want to learn more. You know, we that's good too. So get with Mary on that on Pathfinders. Anybody else? We good? We good. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take up an offering real quick, and uh, for tithes and offering. And if I can get the ushers up here, Brian, and uh, we'll get that. You know, I hate. I know I rush an offering a lot. It. You know, there's so many ways that we can pay. Uh, you guys can go on our site and give and donate. You don't, you know, you don't have to put in the bag if you don't, you know, there's other ways to give and we do this. This is a ritual, but I don't, I don't ever want to take anything away from it. Sometimes I get up here and, you know, I hate to say it's a nuisance. It's not a nuisance. It's a gift. It's a, it's a way we give back to the Lord, you know, and you know, uh, I know in my thoughts, you guys know me, that, you know, I've heard so many people tell me, well, I'm just tired. I walk in there, and first thing they want to do is take my money, and, you know, well, they can get over that, you know. We know why we take it up. It's because we give back to the Lord what he gives us, and that's what it's about. I don't want to ever diminish anything from it. I, you know, I do. I, I want to get it done. I want to get into worship, and, and that's the thing, and I don't want to pass it over, so... Lord, I just pray right now, Father, Lord, that you just take uh, this offering and use it to glorify your kingdom and bless this church and your people. And, Lord, let it uh, go to our communities. And, Lord, just guide the money and the funds where you need it to be. Bless those that are able to give and those that aren't, Father, Lord. We know that you love us. You trust us, Father. We trust you, Lord, and we just want to give back to you what you have provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. Uh
Yeah, let's go ahead and just start a praise and worship, guys. As, as I journey through this land, singing as I go. Yeah. 
singing that song when I was 16 and, and it's been that long since I've sung it so there you go so it's probably as old as oh no but anyway yeah it, it's no song yes it is you know because he lives we can all face tomorrow and had it not been for Jesus and that old rugged cross, yes. where will your soul be today? Yes. Amen. Amen. God sent his son. Praise God. You know what? It's all because he lives. How many here has lost a loved one? 
You know, when they go, we get very sad because we miss them. But if they know the Lord as we know the Lord, that day is victorious. The day that we go home. We should not be afraid of death. Death has no sting for us. We should not be afraid of it. You know, but I know a lot of us, we think about the pain and suffering and the things that our body and our flesh may go through. But we think about that day when we cross that river into glory. Think how amazing that is going to be. You know, one day that's going to happen. And one day he may come down and just call us home. It could be, you guys may be seated for a second. Uh, You know, he can call us at home any second. And we need to be ready. You know, when I look out here and I see most of you guys, I know most of you guys, I know most of y'all's hearts, you're faithful, you're here tonight on a Wednesday night. But we have a job to do. We have our loved ones that may not know the Lord. How many find this challenging to win them to the Lord? Be honest. How do we do that? We do that through prayer. We do that through fasting. We do that in so many ways. You know, some of us, it may be our children. Some may be relatives. And Sabrina, you can sit down, sweetie. It may be a while. But... Uh, but you know what we've got to be an example and our kids most of us I look out here we have older kids adult kids and I think about the things that we did when we were younger I think about myself when I was raising my kids I was not living the way I should have been living for the Lord I went yes I, I took them to church and you know did the sunday school thing and stuff like that but my thing is when they looked at my life did it reflect god and i'm sad to say that i don't feel yes i might have been put on persona i came to church and was doing the church thing but was my life reflecting god was i with my ex-wife when we were fighting and and squabbling all the time was that reflecting God when I was saying things that were hateful and hurtful no sometimes we get caught up in things we get caught up in emotions we get caught up in our angers our fears and if if any of y'all have ever had like a child custody case or what whatever happened it's not the fact that Both parties don't love the children. And this could work in many different ways. Uh, You squabble because of love. Right? Your ex-spouse may love the children. You love the children. You differ in, differ in, in many ways of raising these children. Okay, and I don't know where this is going, guys, but I'm just letting this go. Okay. And I don't know what the Lord's got planned here. But, but I do know what it's like to love my children. Anybody here not love their children? How many loves their children? Show of hands. Praise God. See, that love for our children, we show it. And we love them so much when somebody else is trying to do something that they may love them but wants to direct them a different way that we don't agree to, there becomes emotions. Because we are humans, and we want to see, we get visual things in everything that we do. We have a certain way that we see the situation should go. But when that situation does not go that way, what happens? Our emotions get involved, and we either act in anger or or discontentment or such so i i want to read a scripture pastors back here but i want to read a scripture about love and and the one thing that that brought this all out to me is it's all about love 
Let's go to 1 John 4, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Did you hear that? What did it say? Those that do not love do not know God. So, church, I want to, and I know most of you have heard this before from me also, that I had a hard time. Even, and that's what my kids seen too. They didn't see me truly love somebody. And I can sit here and testify right now that God has changed my heart, guys. I know a man in the back there, Tom, God has changed his heart. We know what it's like to truly not love people. But God has changed me where I can love. I can see things differently through his eyes. And guys, no matter what you're going through, we have to love one another. People are going to say things that are hurtful, painful, but I don't look out here. We may do the same also to others. So with that, we need to remember that when somebody says something that they may cut to the bone, do your best to turn it over to the Lord. Try to not act upon, you know, uh, going through leadership training, they teach us that if something does, somebody says something that you don't like or you get an email that really aggravates you, they tell you to wait a day, at least 24 hours before you reply or respond to that situation. And see, guys, if, if you do that, it gives you time to calm down, look at the whole situation. But how many of us in our younger years had the energy to fight? Okay, so we reacted right then. And I look out, I don't have the energy to fight now, guys. I'm like, you know what? I love you. I'm going to let this go. I don't need the drama. But, but God says right there, if we do not love others, we do not love him. So, guys, I just want to let you know that if you're going through something now or in the future, just remember that God is love and we are to love. And that love means walking away from a situation They may put you into a place that says, put you in, to a point of saying something that you may regret. And I've, you know, I've, been, I've said things that I could never take back to my children mostly and, and stuff. So with that, just uh, since Pastor here, he's preaching, I didn't come here to preach. But I just wanted to bring that out, and I don't know what the Lord or who that's for or whatever but I just want you to know that God is love, and you cannot love God without loving others. So with that, let's go ahead and take up some uh, prayer requests. And I know we want to remember our nation, Afghanistan, uh, Haiti, uh, president, vice president. Remember our churches, our military, uh, our nursing homes, our schools, our children. And remember, uh, Dr. Fred Crapes in Cushing, he, he's apparently got COVID, so remember him. Uh, I've got a friend named uh, James DeShield. He passed away yesterday morning from COVID in Des Moines, Iowa, and he lives in Color lived in Colorado. So remember that family, the DeShield family, for their mourning and loss on that. Anybody else? Okay, jobs and cancer, yes. Remember my uh, granddaughter, my seven-year-old. You know, she was diagnosed with COVID, but she's better today. She just having to run after her nose. I don't know where her nose goes to, but anyway, sneezing a lot, but she's doing good. Remember this, and praise God. Yes, yes. Go for it. Oh, 
praise God. A lot to say about that. That is a testimony because even with them, you still get bills coming in the mail. But but praise God, at least both of them be paid. Yes, fish. Russell Trimble. Okay, remember this that that he will get paroled and let go. Russell Trimble. Yes, Mary. Carney schools was closed because COVID. All right. Remember that. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty more coming up. So, Jess. Yeah, just remember all of our, our children in the school. And it's just hard. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in elementary or high school. Yes. Yes, remember Jess Banford, Amanda, remember Amanda? forsake you remember these that you know there's we talk about the suicide thing there's a lot especially in our young people these suicidal thoughts and stuff that come to people's head it's all because of depression and stuff and uh, we lose our love we lose that joy that we have and when you lose that you know you lose a lot we need to put our hope and our trust in our lord and praise god she's got a sister that's willing to talk to her and stuff and ron it's good to see you back too we've been missing you <laughs> so, so I understand. So, yeah, right. Anybody else? Let's all stand, go to the Lord, and, and just bring all these. And let's give Him thanks and just ask Him for these needs. Father, I just praise You today, Father.
can do is so good is he not you guys love him love him with everything that you have willing to love others and show it to them that's what it's about that's what it's about guys praise God thank you we give you praise and thank you Jesus just lift him up Glorify you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen, amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad that God is able? Hallelujah. I said our God is able. It doesn't matter what darkness comes about. It don't matter what evil lurks about tonight. Our God is able, and he's faithful tonight. He's faithful to save. He's faithful to heal. He's able to meet our every need tonight. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord here. He's so strong tonight. My, 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 what a joy. What a joy that we can come to a church and feel the presence. We can feel a love in the house. Thank you, Brother Kevin, for ministering on love tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you, we can never get enough of that. Amen. We can never get enough of that. I, you know, I, I preach a lot of funerals, and I find myself preaching more about love at funerals than what I do at weddings anymore because there's so many people that are hurting. So many people, so many families are distraught, and there's so much division in the families. God just speaks on me to share love, to try to bring unification back to that family. And so anyway, I feel like I'm preaching a wedding at a funeral, but uh, that's what the people need to hear. Amen. There's so much hate and anger and disruption and discord in the world. My, 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 but God, God is able. Woo, turn your neighbor nice and say, neighbor, I love you. Neighbor, I smile at him real big like, like you mean it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you tonight. Praise God. Amen. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me over to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, if you would, tonight. Praise the Lord. We're still talking about Hebrews tonight. God is so good. I love him. Love you guys tonight. Plan on spending eternity with all of us. I've got a feeling that ain't going to be very long. Man, oh man. I mean, we're living in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're living in the days of Noah. It's going to be like this. We're living in Matthew, 26th chapter. We're living in Luke, the 21st chapter. Amen. Be ready, church, at all times. 
Be ready at all times. My, 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 my. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Let's go ahead and get, pick it up down about verse. Uh, we've talked about 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Let's talk about chapter verse 5 tonight. Let's talk about verse 5. Amen. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Whoo, can I get an amen in the house tonight? What a promise. What a promise tonight. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for this opportune time. Lord, do we get to come together, Lord, in your name, in the Father's house tonight. Father, we come seeking your face and your will tonight. Lord, it is our desire, Lord, that we're going to leave here differently than the way we've come in. Father, we just pray for the anointing, Lord, of the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, help us to rightly divide the word tonight, Lord, as we teach, Lord, as we receive, as we apply to tonight, Lord, as we respond, uh, Lord, to the Word of God faithfully tonight. Father, as we come to worship and praise you and bless you, Lord, I ask you to anoint this old preacher tonight, God, that you will help me. Lord, make my mouth a pen of a ready writer, Lord, that I may deliver, Lord, the truth of your Word tonight, God. Father, we love you. We invite your help tonight. We invite the real preacher to show up. Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. And amen, and amen. The Apostle Paul is writing here. I figured I might as well go ahead and preach on this tonight because the two hardest subjects to preach on was sex and money. <laughs> it's a common fact. It's a common fact tonight that if you go to the bank, there's three people, there's three types of people that they have trouble lending money to. You can check this out. Number one is prostitutes. Number two is painters, and number three is preachers. <laughs> Ain't that nice to be in that category? <laughs> so we talked about we talked about uh, marriage and sex the other day, and so uh, so tonight we're going to talk about money. You might don't get nervous on me yet, amen. I figure if we just had these two hardest subjects, we just might as well just go ahead and knock them in the head and move on, <laughs> amen. But no, this is more than money tonight. It's more than money tonight. We're going to talk about the spirit of, of covetousness tonight and its dangers. And uh, I, I've, I've talked about covetous many, many times and different things. But I, I, I tried to go a little bit deeper this time and try to bring some things that I normally wouldn't. Uh, to bring some light to the, the importance, the dangers of it tonight. And uh, hopefully it's going to help us to be better Christians and better serving of the Lord tonight. So if you look this up tonight, it says, let your conduct, let your conduct, that is your conduct, the word conduct is your personal behavior. Each one of us has a behavior, right? Amen. So let's talk about your personal behavior tonight. It's the way that we act. It's the, this is all in dictionary right here. I'm not making none of this up or filling in the games or, or putting in hot air tonight. This is strictly what I have researched and found out tonight. So it's personal behavior. It's the way of acting. And it's how we manage oneself. We are responsible for our actions. We are responsible for our behavior. It's how we manage ourselves tonight. And so also I looked up a little bit deeper with this. Now, how many loves good heat and air in your home? We call it duct work. Well, if you add con to it, it means conduct tonight. And so it's basically the same way tonight. It, 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 it serves as a channel. So your personal attitude, the way you behave, is a personal channel to get something through you to somebody. It's a conduct. We are a conduit. We are a conduit in a sense, but also we're like a ductwork, whether it be whether it be sound, whether it be electrical, or whether it be heat and air. We are someone that flows through. So when I started really looking at what covetous means tonight, two words kept coming to my mind. And number one is to be a steward, to be a steward and a manager of what God has given us. Stewardship. And a manager is so vital in a Christian's life, in a Christian's perspective tonight, because I am responsible for those things that God has put in me, under me, or in my control. 
And so this is very important in that as I lay some groundwork and I'm talking about covetous, not whether it be money, whether it be uh, uh, positions, whether it be uh, personal trials, whether it be spiritual gifts, whether it be positions of power or even influence. These are all some major things tonight. And the reason I think we bring all this in is because there's so many people that they sometimes they don't covet money or covet things, but they may covet the things I just mentioned. They may covet that influence. They may covet that power. They may covet that, that position that they so You know, when you get so filthy, stinking rich as a lot of people are out there, they just start spending money foolishly going to the moon, going to outer space because they don't know what else to do with it. Rather than invest it in something beneficial that's going to be eternal, it's like they just throw it away. Hello. You know, I, I learned a long time ago and determined a long, long time ago I'm never going to be rich. So I just keep right on working, and I just keep on paying my bills and keep all my bankers happy. Amen. <laughs> and so, you know, if you read Smith Wigglesworth, he's the name in the ministry, you know, they said that man was a millionaire several times over. But when he died, he died a pauper because he gave it all away. That's my kind of idol tonight. That's the one I want to idolize, who cared about the ministry, who cared about the eternal, who cared about the kingdom of God, who was willing to invest in people's lives. He was a manager, and he was a steward of what God had given him. So when we look at this here tonight, there's some words you might want to write down that are very important. You, you, you've probably seen it. You've probably done it. And so we, you might just not have a name for it tonight. And so number one would be, uh, liber, liber, liberality. Liberality. That means that you have a generous giving heart or a generous giving spirit about you. The old saying is, man, that guy or that woman, they would just give you the shirt off their back. That's the kind of attitude and behavior that we want, amen? Who has a willingness and a givingness tonight, who's willing to surrender alms and giving generously tonight. A number two of this right tonight, you might find the word parsimony. Parsimony tonight. That means that you have an extreme, exclusive economy attitude. In other words, they're so tight they squeak when they walk. Huh? <laughs> Somebody may be a parsimonious tonight because they're so tight they may be known as a penny pincher. They may be known as one who is a very frugal or very thrifty. And tonight, and if we're talking about me, they say that pastor, he's really cheap. So I got a little bit of parsimony in my life tonight. I, I'm, I got to be frugal, amen. Especially with our, with our groceries, groceries, the inflation, our groceries and everything, the gas price that we are, we got to watch our pennies at times, amen? we got to watch those things out there, glory to God. So we got to continue to keep living tonight. And, and, and there's some things that when you look in the word parsimony tonight, uh, if you'll just give me just a little bit of liberty, if you go to Proverbs, you know, when you look at things like covetous tonight and you look at greed and, and attitude, you, you got to go to one of the wisest men that ever lived, and that's Solomon, and look at some of his writings. So if you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 11, Proverbs 11 and verse 24, you'll say that there is that scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is right, but tendeth, but it tendeth to poverty. Verse 25 says, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So we can either be an old tight wad, and we'll get quiet in this third Baptist church tonight. I mean, we're just talking about money tonight, amen. You can't take it with you when you go. <laughs> Might as well enjoy it. J.K. and Act Pentecostal tonight. I don't know about you, but I like money. Amen. Green's my favorite color. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like nice homes. I like nice automobiles. I like nice travel trailers. I like nice toys. <laughs> Hello? Who doesn't like those things? Amen. Oh, now, Pastor, that, you, you as a pastor, you ought not be thinking about those kind of things. You know what I found out? 
me get over here where I found this out. You know what I found out? Abraham was filthy, stinking rich. Him and Sarah, they had cattle, they had camels, they had property, they had land, they had chickens. Hello? I mean, they had it all. They did. You know what he had when he died? You know what piece of property he owned when Abraham died? Had a gravesite. That's the only thing that he wanted because he gave it all away. There was not a covetous, but God blessed him. Let me tell you, God wants to bless his people, but if we'll be the stewards and we'll be the managers that God blessed us with, God will trust you with what he's going to give you. Amen. When you start coveting something, when you want to start holding on to it, and you want to start, start having a, have a spirit of covetousness about it, and I'll get more into that. But I also found out that Job, my Lord, Job was rich. Job was filthy. My Lord, he was so blessed. Isaac was blessed. Uh, 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 Jacob was blessed. Lot was blessed. Hezekiah, King David was blessed. Boaz, whoo, my Lord, he owned vineyards. He owned, my Lord, he owned a lot of stuff. Well, let us don't think it's right for Christians to be blessed and have a lot of stuff. It's okay. It's okay to have possessions as long as possessions don't ever have you. God, if God can trust you as a steward and as a manager, he will, because he said the words, fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom, amen. God wants you to be blessed in God's kingdom, amen. Solomon, my Lord, Solomon had more than what to do with. Blessed it. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a little, wee little man, but he was rich. Matthew, the tax collector. Joseph of Arimathea, one that took the body down for the cause of Christ. Rich. Lydia, the seller of purple, the first church in the Western world. How about Abigail and Nabal? And my goodness, I kept on Dorcas. And I found out that Philemon had a lot of slaves back then. He was wealthy. So, so, so tell me tonight that God wants to bless his people, but we've got to be stewards and managers, because I understood this tonight, because it said in Psalm 24 and 1, God owns it all. I realized a long time ago, I don't, really, I don't own anything. I don't own nothing. It's all his. So why would I want to hold on to something and not bless somebody or not give it away? Because if I give it away... He said, cast your bread upon the waters not many days hence. Honey, you're going to get it back. Why do we want to hold on and be greedy about something when God said, if you give it, give, give. See, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. Shall men give in your bosom? Woo, my Lord, I want to be a giver tonight, amen. Woo, everything I have is not mine. And we've got to come to that reality. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He said, all the gold is mine. All the silver is mine. He said, even vengeance is mine. Hello. So it's important tonight that we don't have a spirit of covetousness, but we have a spirit of liberality tonight. And we can also have a spirit of avarice. An avarice spirit. And that means to have a spirit of greed for riches. Greed. Greed is a dangerous thing. It's a mighty desire to gain. It's a mighty desire to gain and just hoard wealth. Kind of reminds me of the story of the man. He said, I'm going to tear down these barns and I'm going to build bigger barns. That's greed. Hoarding it up. Rather than blessing somebody, rather than being able to help somebody, he said, I'm going to tear these old barns down, and I'm going to build me some big barns, and from here on out, I'm going to take my ease, and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. Honey, let me tell you, my joy comes from the Lord. It's not what I have in this old world tonight, my Lord. If I had barns, they'd be filled with junk. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that tonight. Let me put it like this. My wife has stuff, but I have junk. <laughs> Can I get a witness tonight? Get your stuff out of here. 
I'll get my stuff as soon as you get your junk out of here. That's how we divide. <laughs> That's how we define each other's stuff. Amen. <laughs> I, like those, I like those people that says, you know what? I'm not going to throw that away because I might need that sometime. <laughs> I've come there. Sometimes I just got to close my eyes and just start throwing. You know what I found out? I did that not needing it anyway. Sometimes we can have a lot of clutter, can't we? But there's some differences what I'm talking about here tonight. And so we can look at liberality tonight. We can look at parsimony. We can look at covetousness. We can look at avarice tonight. But we can also look at the spirit of tonight of being benevolent. Having a kindness and having a charity. Having an act or a gift to give tonight. You know, when you look at the word covetousness, if you go to the book of Micah, Micah, the second chapter. Look at this. This is, this is some interesting words tonight in the book of Micah. Micah, the second chapter. Let me get over where it's at. Micah, the second chapter. I hate it when, this, when they move these books on me. <laughs> Micah, Micah, the second chapter, verse number one. He says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and they work or they plan evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it's in their power of their hand. So the person that has a covetous spirit, they're thinking and they're pondering how they can be more greedy, or how they can devise a plan to take it from somebody else and add it to their flock. They're thinking about it all night. It's meditated. It's, a, it's an evil spirit. Because he says they work evil upon their beds. They're laying in bed trying to come up with a scheme or trying to come up with a plot. How they can just covet more because he said in verse 2, and they covet fields. And watch this. They don't go by the fields. They don't go offer money for the fields, but they take them by violence. And we see that. We hear that. He said they take it by violence. They take houses, and they take them away so they oppress a man and they his house, even a man and his heritage. They're so vile and they're so evil with the spirit of covetousness not, that they're willing to do about whatever it takes to add to their life or add to their accumulation because they have a spirit. It's an evil, it's an evil spirit tonight that is so evil tonight. And so when you, when you look at this, the word, the word covet, you can also look in, Col in Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. I want to bring this in here tonight, and we're going to move on in just a second. But Colossians, the third chapter, verse number 5, says these words right here. He says, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Number one, fornication. Number two, uncleanliness. Number three, inordinate affection. That's a, that's a passion. He said, an evil concupiscence, which is evil desires. And then lastly, he mentions covetousness. Then look what follows. Wow. He said, these are idolatry. This is what idolatry, because people make possessions their idols. They're serving their self. They're serving their own behavior. They're serving their own self because they're not serving God. He said, you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. And there's too many people with a spirit of covetousness that are caught up serving things, serving possessions, rather than serving the living God because it becomes an idol to them. That's what makes, makes, makes covetousness so dangerous tonight because they start serving it. They start serving things tonight. And so we look at this right here. We are responsible for other people. Amen. So when God blesses us as stewards and managers tonight... And God trusts us with his gifts, his blessings, his financial. We're to be that river. 
were to be that river to flow through. I'm I just curious. So I, I Google. I like to Google sometimes. And, and, and I Googled and I typed in, how long does it take for someone who has won the lottery to spend it all? Anybody got a clue? The number one is three to five years. What really stirred me after the end of that was they said, at the end of the three to five year period, they're completely broke. They're filing for bankruptcy and they're in worse condition than they was before they ever won it. That win millions and millions of dollars in three to five years, it's all gone and they wind up in worse financial shape than was they were before they ever went into it. That's not being a good steward. That's not being a good manager of what God gives. Whatever, whatever ever, how reason it comes. We don't believe in playing the lottery. We don't believe in buying lottery tickets. We don't believe in gambling. At least I don't tonight. Amen. Getting quiet in this third Baptist church. Amen. <clears throat> You know, besides, you know, we learn this Sunday morning pretty often. I appreciate our kids. I appreciate our Sunday school Sunday morning. I appreciate the multiple times we heard the Ten Commandments in Romer 10 was, Thou shalt not covet. Don't covet your neighbor's house. You don't covet your neighbor's car. You don't covet your neighbor's wife. Hello. Amen. So we learned all this Sunday morning. It's the 10th commandment. We don't covet. We don't covet those things tonight. So the Apostle Paul tells us here in the book of Philippians, right next door from where we're at, in Philippians, the fourth chapter, he tells in verse number 11, he says, he says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have, what? Learned. Somebody say learned. 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 Contentment is taught and learned. You got that? If contentment is taught and learned, then how does a person receive a covetous spirit? Think about it. Think about it. You were born with it. It's sin. You are born into sin. Covetousness is evil. It's called idolatry. You didn't have to be taught how to be coveting things. It came natural. It's not a gift. <laughs> it came natural. <laughs> you were born with it. So whenever you become born again, you start to learn what it is to be contented with what you have but a covetousness you're born with it so the apostle Paul is telling us here this humongous big word he says he learned for I have learned and that's what we're doing here now we are teaching it we're being taught how the importance of it is that we that we learn to be content he said these words he said in whatever state I am in having a spirit tonight he said i will be fill in the blank for me on this right here i will be happy write this down mary if you want to take notes write this down <laughs> write it down i will how do you spell i <laughs> i got it is that right when yeah, that's a big word. I will be happy when. when. Now you fill in the blank. That's covetousness. I will be happy when I get my healing. I will be happy. I will be happy when I get my breakthrough. I will be happy when I get married. How about this one? I will be happy when I'm single again. <laughs> just, 
I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Ah, hallelujah. I will be happy when I get promoted to that next level. When I get that next, when I get that job promotion, I get that name, I'll be happy then. I will be happy when. You know what? This sounds, it, it, we, we laugh at this tonight, but so often, too often, we base our happiness on the what ifs. We base our happiness on the whens. Paul said, I have learned to be content in whatever state I am in. See, contentment is in the heart. Contentment is in the heart regardless or in spite of the circumstances based upon our source or based upon whatever. Because it's not ba- our, our contentedness and our happiness is not based upon our external circumstances. It's in the heart tonight. He said, where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Paul had this thing figured out. He said, I have learned it. Sometimes lessons are hard to learn, but my, this lesson paid off big time because here we are almost 2,000 years later and we're still teaching it, amen, because this is what's important in the kingdom of God tonight to be a manager and a steward over what God has given us and blessed us with tonight because he said, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be con." we got to learn that no matter what the situation I'm going to be content I'm going to be content contentment is great gain tonight folks contentment is great gain he said these words he says not that I speak in respect of want for I have Learn in whatever state I am there with to be content. I know both how to be abased, be in need, and I know how to abound. I know what it is to have plenty. He said, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He said, whatever state I'm in, because he's not basing his enjoyment, he's not basing his happiness on the situation, because his true joy and his true contentment is found in Jesus Christ. Paul come to realize tonight, he said, it's not, it, it, it's not about who we are, what we have. It's about whose we are. It's about whose we are and who we belong to tonight. Paul, Paul was writing this word of encouragement here tonight. We need to understand that, that we know that God is enough. God is enough. I'm going to show you some pictures Sunday morning. It's going to truly, truly bless you tremendously. So we understand that, that God is, in, I don't need another house to make me happy. I don't need another vehicle to make me happy. I don't need another million dollars to make me happy. How many, we got, we got some folks back here in the Roosevelt days. That too, y'all too young for that? Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a few years ago. But there was a guy, his name was Bernard Bayrock, you ever heard of him? He served with President uh, Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt. He was one of their financial advisors or advisees. And I found this written by him, and it says that he was a very successful financier, very wealthy man, served in the government of the United States, served as the president's advisors. Made millions, successful businessman. You know, they're saying everything he put his hand to just turned to gold and prospered. He was that type of guy. And they asked him this question. He said, how much money <clears throat> does it take for a rich man to be satisfied? His answer was this. Just a million more. Just a million. That's, that's a spirit of discontentment. 
because they're never satisfied. They're never content with what, because, let me tell you, if we don't have Jesus in our heart tonight, we'll never be content with no matter what state, no matter how much we got or how little, we'll never be content. Because he come to the point tonight, Paul said, he said, I know how to abound. I know how to be obeyed. Paul understood whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content because of whose I am and who I belong to. Amen. Paul said, I am who I am because of who he is. He said, just one million more. So we look at this here tonight. So, so many times in our life tonight, well, I found another big old giant word tonight. It's called pseudo-happiness. Pseudo means false, pretend happiness. It's called a counterfeit high. Let me give the definition of it. Let me give me the example of it, rather. How many likes cotton candy? Hallelujah. God's gift to mankind. Whether it's blue, pink, red, or even old yeller, cotton candy. Watch it twirl up around that. Let me show you. You take off a big old hunk of that. I mean, you string it out. And you hold it up and you just filter it all the way down. And you get all sticky with it. And it's a big old wad of it. No matter if you smish it or squash it or ball it up, the moment it hits your mouth, what happens? That is pseudo happiness. And that is things, that is things tonight that we, we can covet. We can try to hold on to it. He says, and he said in Psalms, he said, our riches are just fleet. They take wings and they fly away. Sometimes we have fleeting riches. So it's just like cotton candy, folks. Here one moment, you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, and the next moment it's gone. And you wonder, where did it go? Watch this. But oh, wasn't it sweet to your mouth? And that's the thing about this. We, 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 they said, man, I'll be happy because I can taste the pleasure of it. I can enjoy the pleasure. I can enjoy the happiness. And when we get it, it's just like it flees away tonight. So when we look at this, I'm going to leave you with this word right here. Travel light and live simply. Folks, this old world is wrapping up rapidly. This world is wrapping up rapidly. Have a loose grip on this old world. Have a loose grip. Don't be tied to things. Don't be tied to stuff. Don't be, don't be holding on this old world, church. Live lightly. Live simply tonight. Because our, 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 our enemy... Our enemy is not your possessions. That's not your enemy. What is your enemy of it then? Your enemy is this right here, having an excessive spirit of it instead. When you excess over it, you ponder on it, you just got to have more to make you happy. I mean, we all got to work to pay our bills. We're all working hard. We're working 24-7, 365 days a year. We don't know what a holiday is. Amen. There's a difference between being a hard worker. There's a difference between being a worker trying to provide for your family and having a covetous spirit. And that's greed. If it's, if it's got a hold of us tonight, we need to have a spirit. Number one, have a spirit of gratitude. That will remove a spirit of grief when you start being thankful. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And having a spirit of gratitude and having a spirit of thankfulness about us to all that God has blessed us with tonight. When we look in 1 Timothy, I'll wrap it up right here. I <laughs> take <Second> closing. <laughs> 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6. Watch this right here. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 says these words right here. But godliness with contentment is great gain. That's the kind of gain I want tonight. That's the gain that I want to be happy with tonight. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out of it. Hallelujah. 
The only thing that you and I or anybody else will take when we breathe our last breath is knowing that we have faith in Jesus Christ. Because the Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight and I've kept the faith. And I kept the faith. And Hebrews eleven thirteen 13 says, these died in faith. That's what we want tonight right there. He said these words, we brought nothing into this world. And we, it is certain that we're going to carry nothing. Why? Because our God owns it all. He gave it to us to enjoy. He gave it to us tonight. He said, and having food and having raiment, let us be there with content. Honey, if you got food in your cupboard tonight, if you got food on your table, if you got a roof over your head, you got clothes in, the, clothes in your closet, honey, you're blessed tonight. You are blessed beyond measure. I talked to a good friend of mine, and he was, he was bragging about Jesus the other day. He said, Pastor, I just got to tell you how good God's been to me. I said, tell me, brother. He said, I have not bought groceries in three years. Three years. I've not bought. He said, I, he said, I just get blessed. God provides my every meal for me. Amen. Folks, yes, if we will put God first, we will trust God. He will take care of us. Amen. Having food and having raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will... Be rich, having the lust of the flesh, fall into temptation, and fall into a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. It's not wrong to have money, but it's wrong to have the love of money because it's the root of all evil. I like money. Don't you like money? Ronnie, don't you like money? I do. You like money, Brother Kevin? Oh, hallelujah. Anybody like money? Don't like money? Don't like money? Oh, filthy lucre tonight. <laughs> I like things. I like pretty things. I like shiny things. It's okay to have things, but as long as your things don't have you. That's the difference tonight, church. Paul said, I've learned to be content. I may not wear 24 karat gold, don't have to have Rubens and Rubens and diamonds, but I know this. If I be a steward and I be a manager of what God has blessed me with, we're going to have some treasures laid up in heaven where the rust doesn't bother it, where the moths don't eat it tonight, and the things ain't going to corrupt it. Amen. We got our treasures laid up in my Lord, where your treasure is. There will you, woo, hallelujah. There will your heart be also. Church, my heart, my heart is in the heavenlies. My heart is on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. God is so good to us tonight. Hallelujah. He said, which, which while some coveted after they were greedy over it, they have erred, they have wandered from the faith. And they have pierced themselves through with many, many sorrows. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the Lord maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it <laughs> that's the kind of riches we want tonight amen the riches that god blesses we can be rich in love rich in faith rich in hope tonight brother jim will go he said he's a rich man folks we're all rich if we got jesus christ in our heart we found the pearl of great price we got the joy of the lord if you got joy tonight you're we're wealthy if you got peace tonight, you're wealthy. If you got your name written down the land book of life, honey, you're blessed. Woo! Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The peace of the Lord. Knowing that salvation belongs to you tonight. Knowing tonight the salvation. Knowing the salvation tonight. And faith and character is what matters in the end. Amen. I could read on, but I'm going to stop right there tonight. Father, we just love you. 
Father, we thank you tonight for the teaching of the Word of God. Lord, we're not going to give way to covetousness tonight, but God, help us to be stewards. Help us to be managers tonight, Lord, of what you have given us. Lord, help us to be benevolent. Lord, help us to care. Help us to share tonight, Lord, to be a, have a generous heart about us. God, help us to be, help us to be wise stewards, uh, Lord, over the things that you've given, whether it be our gifts, whether it be our talents, whether it be our time. Lord, whether, whatever it may be tonight, God. Father, what things are important to us. Lord, help us to take care of our vehicles. Lord, give us the wisdom how to take care of our homes. Lord, give us the wisdom how to take care and provide for our families. Lord, we trust you tonight. Lord, that we're going to have food on our table. We're going to have clothes on our back tonight. Lord, we're going to have shelter tonight. Father, we thank you. Lord, for all these things you have provided. Father, we thank you for the splendor. Lord, and the glory that you have poured out upon your people tonight. Lord, we thank you for the godliness. Lord, is great gain. Father, we pray the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, to teach us. Lord, help us to have this behavior. Lord, help us to act wisely tonight. Lord, in every condition, every situation. Lord, knowing, knowing whose we are. Father, we love you tonight. Lord, we give you praise. We give you the glory for it. In Jesus' holy name, and the whole church said amen. There's a little old chorus that I've been singing all week. We're going to close that with this tonight. Turn it up there for me, Cheryl. Some of you probably know it. It's been around for 100 years. But it says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look well in his wonderful face. For the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This is what matters tonight, folks. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look well in his wonderful face. For the things of the earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Lift your hands tonight. Just begin to praise him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Hallelujah, church. Turn your eyes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Woo! He says, come unto me. Come unto me. All you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Turn up on, turn up on me. Look to me tonight. God gives us the peace tonight. Woo, that we so desperate, the joy, the peace, the contentment that we're looking for is only found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we're going to turn our eyes upon you. Lord, we're going to loosen our grip on the soul world. God, we're going to loosen our grip on things. Lord, we're going to loosen our grip tonight, God, up on possessions. But God, we're going to hold on to you tonight. Lord, we're going to keep holding to God's unchanging hand. Lord, we're going to keep holding to the old rugged cross. God, we're going to keep looking up tonight, God, looking to you, Lord, as a provider of all of our needs. Father, we trust you for it tonight. Lord, begin to minister to every heart. Minister to every life tonight, God. Lord, help us to learn contentment tonight. Lord, help us to, help us to receive it. Help us to apply it tonight, God. Father, we thank you tonight, God, that you do supply. Lord, and you do provide. Lord, and you do bless tonight. God, help us to be good stewards and managers of all that you've given us. 
Father, we love you and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. Ain't God good, folks? God good. I feel better now. I've got sex out of the way and i got money out of the way. <laughs> Don't you love the joy of the Lord tonight? I love our church. I love you so much tonight, folks. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. We've got to, we have to do the ministry today, and I thank God for that. And if somebody would like to help with the ministry tomorrow, you're more than welcome to go to Jennings tomorrow. We're going to go to Ripley on Friday. So God has given us an avenue to go in these schools. It's such a marvelous blessing tonight that we can lift up the name of Jesus, proclaim his love tonight. Folks, that's the blessings right there. If God, if God can trust us, he'll bless us to bless others. That's how God does. God blesses you. To be a blessing. God blesses us to be a blessing. It's reciprocal. He blesses us. We give to receive to give. Amen. Just that simple tonight. Let's stand to our feet tonight as we just worship the Lord in prayer tonight. Brother Rick, would you be so kind as to dismiss us in prayer tonight, my friend? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. Praise your holy name, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.